Good morning. Today is May 30th, 2024, and we are on the, uh, uh, this is our 90, recording number 91 on Tanya, the second book of, the second book of Tanya. We're going, and uh, yesterday we talked about um, the second book specifically summarizes not as much as anatomy, but physiology. The first book was like, we're breaking down anatomy of uh, how God's interaction with us um, operates and the methods how to get closer to God, how to become one with God, how to handle our problems in the world and uh, be between us and God and between people us and, and other people. And uh, volume number two, much thinner, now goes deeper into more like philosophical description of the nature, physiology of, of the divinity, not anatomy as much. So we talked about yesterday about the, the uh, development of the concept of the unity of God, non-duality, how initially it was uh, more felt that this is God and this is us. God is almighty, but he is separate from us. Then eventually that was replaced or enhanced by idea God is one, but he has attributes of uh, mercy and uh, justice and this and that. And um, then even within Kabbalists, where there was a little bit of disagreement, was it perceived or real attributes? Well, we discussed about it yesterday, I think in the recording number 90. Today I want to give a little example of how to, uh, kind of simplify example, but those of you who are mathematically inclined or engineers with like a logical uh, inclination to put things in perspective, uh, try to explain in physical terms which kind of the best way can do the illustration. Let's think about it. God is almighty. How can you imagine almighty that, God, um, that, that manages and um, guides our actions here and yet we don't know about God? Well, we'll say we do know about God, but how many people actually saw miracles? Miracles, not we'll say, well, we live with daily miracles, but something unusual, this guy opens up and God speaks to us, just like he did on Mount Sinai, or the sea split. So thinks of that theatrical nature. Well, uh, the, the traditional answer to that, well, God manifests himself daily. But uh, we are not uh, uh, capable to see the God's divine light directly. Well, you can say, well, how come he did express itself at least once at Mount Sinai during splitting of the sea? So there were times in history where such a uh, miraculous manifestation of God did happen. But it, it doesn't happen for the last several thousand years. We didn't see that. And the the uh, the Rambam, Ramban, our our philosopher, our sages, uh, uh, explain that basically, if God would reveal Himself, the world will burn. We talked about continuously. You cannot look in the sun without protective glasses. So let's 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 do this. Imagine the space. Space. We live in three-dimensional space. Three D world. Three D X, Y, and Z. Three-dimensional space. But what about two-dimensional space, one-dimensional space, zero-dimensional space, four-dimensional, five, multi-dimensional space? How do you understand that? Well, in order to, to, to relate to that, let's imagine you have a dot, zero-thickness dot. Here's a point on the paper I just did. Dot. That's a zero dimension. Imagine that you are a person who lives in that dot. You don't have a concept from your, phys from your physics, from your world, from your characteristic of the world. You don't know how to go up and down, right and left. Uh, you're just stuck in the zero dimension. Now imagine there's a line. There's a line here now. This is a line. And let's say you're the person who lives within this line. Here, I drew a little person here. Now, the person only can go up the line this way and back, forward and back. So, if there's not a person in front of you or in the back of you, here's another person, three people in this line. It's a zero thickness line. One person, like you can only see the person in front of you and behind you, but you don't know, you can't see on the sides or certainly perpendicular outside of the paper. That's the one dimensional world. You can go only one way along this line. Now, golf, it's a zero dimension, is a point. The line is 
one dimensional and if we have two spaces two lines here's two lines and they intersect so intersections of the two lines I don't know if the camera can see that intersection between two lines is a point so a, a one dimensional world intersection create zero dimensions one down now imagine that there is a paper and you live in a paper here's all these people they live in a paper and that's a plane and the planes you can go up and down right and left but not perpendicular to the paper so if I'm looking at this paper if I'm looking at these people on the paper I see them but they cannot see me because they don't have ability physical world doesn't come normal to perpendicular to the paper okay that's a now a two-dimensional world if I take two pieces of paper and I intersect them two pieces of paper intersect them the intersections on, on in the paper creates a line but if I take two cubes one cube and another cube and intersect two cube <coughs> intersection between two cubes is a plane so a three-dimensional space intersecting with another three-dimensional space creates a two-dimensional plane so again three-dimensional space intersecting another creates a two-dimensional three-dimensional creates two-dimensional plane and within two-dimensional plates this like in a in a in a plane of my in a plane of my table there's a two-dimensional world and i'm looking at it and i can see them all moving around they can move but they can jump out of the paper and i can see them i'm in three dimensions they're in two dimensions i'm aware of that i can control them i can move that paper i can if i take one guy and just take him out <clears throat> his friend will see him not just diminishing but instantaneously disappearing two-dimensional plane two of them intersect and create a one-dimensional plane which is the line and two one-dimensional lines intersect and create a zero dimension which is a point point line plane 3d well if you extend this analogy to next plane next world a four-dimensional zero one two three four the four-dimensional plane we cannot explain we live in three-dimensional we can't go outside our three-dimensional plane but intersection of those four-dimensional planes i'm not talking about time domain i'm not talking about time and i'm talking about just simply space physics nothing uh, not einstein theory of the time and space just about concept of the four-dimensional space i can't imagine how the four-dimensional space can look like but I can imagine, I can, I can realize that it might exist. And I live in the three-dimensional space, which is intersection of the two four-dimensional. Three-dimensional space of mine is intersection of the four-dimensional, two four-dimensional spaces. So, if God lives in a four-dimensional space, he's looking at us as the three-dimensional spaces. He can see what we're doing. We don't see them directly, so to speak. But if he takes an object out, if he takes this book, three-dimensional book sitting in three-dimensional space if God reaches from the fourth dimension and he takes his book and takes it not sideways not X Y Z but into the fourth coordinate it would disappear just like the people from a two-dimensional plane disappeared out instantaneously they came it's a zero thickness three-dimensional plane so to speak you got the concept okay so that may be analogy so when I am looking and by the way, if I uh, think about this, if I have a line in, uh, well, let's say there's a one person and another person, here's a two persons sitting in the uh, two-dimensional space, and the distance between them, let's say a thousand years or light years of travel, and they can reach each other. We can't go to Alpha Centaur in our lifetime because we don't have, even if we went for a speed of light, it takes more than a lifetime. But if I take this two-dimensional plane and I bend it like this, now these two guys are in a very close proximity to each other. So if they can jump out of their plane, this guy can jump from this, his place, and it's curved, and it jumped towards him, he can get there instantaneously. So by warping the plane, the laws of physics change as long as you have ability to jump from your space, from two-dimensional space, into a three-dimensional space, uh, analogously, if we can jump from a three-dimensional space to a four-dimensional space, we can teletransport distances that are physically impossible in our universe. That is how God essentially looks from his world. 
Now, for him, it might not be in four dimensional, but five, six, seven, eight, nine, infinite dimension. This is what Kabbalah talks the infinite number of worlds, and we break it down from Ein Sof into Atzilut, into Berea, into Yetzirah, into Asiya, and to us. It's four worlds, but in reality, it, it's a simplified Kabbalistic analogy. But in reality, there's infinite number of these transitions. So in my example, there's infinite number of the elevations of the spaces, elevation, elevations of the concepts until it go to infinity. And that is how infinity coming back down into our three-dimensional world. We don't have to go to two-dimensional, one-dimensional, zero-dimensional, because those are known to us in this three-dimensional world. We can see a two-dimensional world. We can see a one-dimensional or zero-dimensional world. We can understand its physics and operations, but we cannot see and experience a four-dimensional world. So we can see the results of it. Again, I'm not saying that God resides in a fourth dimension or fifth dimension. This is just a concept to illustrate physically something that you can intuitively pre-thought process, uh, appreciate and perceive. So while we cannot live, so the person cannot, God says, you cannot see my face and live. If he pulls it out to see him, we're dead. He'll remove our physically from this world. But when you think about it, you think about the, the medicines, like you see in the Star Trek, Dr. Spock takes his device and just, so if, if somebody is, if some, something hurts and, uh, uh, and the doctor looks at it, from a fourth dimension, he can look on our body sort of inside and just move things around and fix it without actually making the surgery. So all the miraculous things are possible, which is what God, God can do. Miraculously do things that for us seems like impossible, and they are impossible for the physical world. But by learning Torah, by praying, by doing mitzvah, doing good deeds, we can, that's a training methods to better understand us that concept to be able to elevate ourselves, to appreciate there is such a world. I cannot see how the angels move around there. Are the angels physical, uh, spiritual deities, or just a concept, ideas, or whatever. We cannot really fully understand it, but we can appreciate the fact that, yes, I kind of understand that God continuously is in charge. He's continuously recreating the world. The creation is ongoing process. And if God would stop this creation, the world will just, like I'm holding this wall from coming down on me. If I let go, the world just collapse and disappear. That is how God, from his dimension, from his infinity, maintains the world and makes it function. And we are continuously experiencing that. So when you think about this concept, and when you sit down sometimes by yourself in a kind of in, a, in front of the, uh, in, in the beautiful weather and in front of the window and just think about it. And you can feel that experience, you can feel that concept that God is watching you, like the song, He is watching us from the distance. But He doesn't want to interfere in a way that will destroy our world. So God, God's mercy, we discussed yesterday, it's a strength. God restricted himself. It seems it's a lack of, it's, a, it's an act of justice, act of givura, the strength. But he restricted us really from the mercy not to burn us. The price we pay, we don't have the close face-to-face -face interaction, but we can get that conceptually if we understand how and why God does it. In order for us to bring his light down, even if it's impossible geometrically, physically, to bring the fourth dimension into the third, but in a God's world, it is possible to bring him. The Torah is mechanism that brings us from this space onto his level, so to speak, and then bring by the by good deeds, by mitzvah, to bring him down to this world. And that is a purpose of the creation, and that is to bring the light of divinity into mundane, into today's world. That's a purpose. Now, that great purpose, philosophical, great person for the humanity, breaks down into specific actions that you need to do. What's the purpose of your life? The purpose of your life, or my life, is not just understand this concept, the wow, philosopher, but actually brings this light down by sometimes putting down your studies and walking over and help the community and take care of the sick and poor and needy um, and get uh, help out with whatever community might need, whatever people desperately need, need. 
Once we create that, we bring the God's light into this world, and that's the purpose of our lives. Each one of us has a different mission. My mission is different than another guy, another guy has a different mission than that lady, and this child has a mission. Uh, young people, even babies, have the mission already for, to give joy to their parents, for example. That's why it's important for the health of family, mother and father and the kids together, experience this joy of connection. But then they have to teach, teach your children. We talk in Tanya, teach your child in his use by his methods. In other words, uh, the father talks to the child. The, the father gets onto his four hands and knees and runs around like a little, uh, little uh, uh, donkey or the horse, and the child is riding on him. You get this like foolish connection between a parent and a child. As the child grows up, you continue developing this, evolving this. Uh, concept of closeness into more tangible, more specific. So when a child becomes a young man and a young woman, then he or she understands the concept of what we're talking about without going through a philosophical discussion, but just knowing that's the right thing to do. Well, if you have any questions, put your comments on the uh, on the comment section for the, the share with other people. What do you think? I get oftentimes uh, notes and feedback from people asking questions, and basically. Um, Basically, uh, I'm not creating anything new. I'm just simply, I was impressed by the book by uh, Chaim Miller. That's a Chaim Miller, it's volume number two, and there are three volumes. These are very thin. The first one is very, it's thicker, uh, 53 chapter. In volume number two, Gateway to Unity and Faith. And the third volume we'll be, we'll be reading after we complete this. That's six more chapters. Um, will be the Teshua, Method of Teshua. It's actually how to repair the past to make the future, to change the future. You can change the future, and you can change the past even. Your past can be changed. Those of you um, who are looking, I, I, I don't know, it's possible. My life is, uh, I've done certain things in the past I regret. I, I can't change it now. Yes, you can. You can even change the past. Well, if you understand the concept of multi-dimensions, then <laughs> certainly, uh, God has a lot more powers to bring us, even though all we see is just a cross-section, a derivative of the reality. But that is what God wants to do. In His mercy, which He shows as a tsum contraction, as a strength, as a judgment, He restricted His life in order for us to understand. He's merciful to let us His light seen partially, however, not infinitely, to understand, appreciate that, Infinity is not for us. Infinity, we can taste that, we can connect to that. But to experience visually with our senses, with our eyes and ears, we cannot. But we can experience it through the prayer, through the learning of the Torah. The light of the higher Torah up there that we don't see is in the physically in the Torah that we learn daily. A little bit. So that's a message for you. Do a little bit Torah learning. If you if you don't if you learn one, two chapters, learn three. If you learn only one page, learn two. If you never open the Torah book, open it. At least read one thing. Light a Shabbat candle. Do something small but tangible. In your world, do what Hashem wants you to do. Find your mission, not just for yourself, but for others. And once you do that, the benefit, tangible benefit, will also be for you. Not only spiritual benefit, but tangible. I think you will feel better. You, your, your issues will disappear. Mizrat Hashem, we hope and pray for that. So have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow for chapter number seven in this book. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it helped you to visualize conceptual and simplicity that transition from infinity of God to find the finite boundaries of our world. Have a great day.